What is up, fellas? My name is Lucas, and today I am here to talk to you about my very favorite species of snake, the Brettles python. First off, very important, I just want to say that I am by no means an expert. Uh, I am just a big fan of the Brettles python. I have multiple in my collection. They are absolutely my favorite species of snake, and for that reason I wanted to make a video highlighting the things that are so cool about Brettles pythons. <sighs> Let's get into this. This is one of my Brettles pythons. Her name is Alice, and she is a stonewashed Brettles python. Um, as you can see, Brettles pythons are a semi-arboreal species. Uh, they do spend a lot of their time up in the trees, in the wild, and if given the option, they will perch from time to time in captivity. All right, so the scientific name for the Brettles python is Morelia bredeli, uh, named in honor of Joe Bredel, a famous herpetologist. Um, other common names for this snake include uh, Brettles python, Bredli, uh, Centralian python, Centralian or Central carpet python. Though they're often bundled in with carpet pythons, Brettles pythons are not part of the Spilota complex. In fact, they have been given full species status. They are, however, sister species with carpet pythons, which explains the similarity in look and why they're often bundled together with carpets. Centralian pythons live about 20 to 30 years in captivity, if kept properly, uh, so they are a long-lived animal. They are an Australian python found in the Northern Territory, uh, just about at the geographic center of Australia, near the town of Alice Springs, um, centered around the McDonnell Ranges. Their environment is essentially an incredibly harsh desert. It's not a very easy place to live. However, this desert is surrounded by even harsher desert. This keeps the Brettles python from expanding outside of their range, which is why they've been separated from the rest of the carpet python complex for millions and millions of years. Hatchlings are quite small. They hatch out around 25 to 30 grams. Uh, this girl here is about a year and a half old and she's putting on size nicely. They do grow very quickly. Adult Brettles pythons are typically between six and a half and eight feet in length. Uh, some really giant Brettles pythons around 10 feet have been uh, recorded, however, it's not common. That's probably about the max size for this species. Adult Centralians are incredibly robust, uh, thick-bodied animals, pretty round, uh, not laterally compressed. They're incredibly strong and muscular. However, they're also incredibly docile and gentle. Brettles pythons typically hatch out with shades of kind of muddy brown and gray. As they mature, they undergo a color change and those shades of brown uh, turn to shades of rust red and like brick red, even oranges in some individuals, uh, while the banding, the gray banding, becomes more of a light creamy color bordered by black uh, outline. There's a lot of variation in adult Brettles pythons in terms of how red they are. Some adults are extremely red and some stay fairly dark colored and uh, brown. And these snakes can change color even by the day. I mean, sometimes I'll look at my Brettles python and they will be absolutely vibrant red and other days they'll be uh, darker brown with less light pigmentation coming through and the reason for that is not entirely known. Some people have theorized that these color changes are spurred on by exposure to UV while other people think it has something to do with uh, digestion and how hungry the python is, but the exact reason is not exactly known. Now Brettles pythons get these big bulldog heads which are distinct from the body and neck. Uh, which I think looks really cool. They also have prehensile tails. They are a semi-arboreal species. One study found that Brettles pythons in the wild spend nearly 88% of their time in the trees, uh, which highlights their arboreal nature. Perfect timing. Goji on my head. Nice. In the wild, Centralians often inhabit rocky outcrops, ledges, caves, gorges, as well as sheltering in trees, tree hollows, shrubs, which often line the seasonal waterways that occur in their natural habitat. Now seriously, Brettles pythons are some of the hardiest, uh, strongest, most tolerant snakes that can be kept in captivity. They come from an incredibly harsh environment and they're tolerant to massive temperature fluctuations. Temperatures in their natural habitat in the wild can range 30 to 40 degrees in a single day uh, in the summer, 
where it can be upwards of 100, 105 degrees during the day and fall into the 70s at night. And during the winter, temperatures in their environment can drop down into the 40s. So they've evolved to be extremely resilient to temperature extremes, which makes them really bulletproof in captivity. Whereas with some pythons, if your temperatures are off by even a few degrees, you can cause problems. Brettles pythons really just don't care. As they do come from a desert environment, uh, centralians have a very fine uh, scalation for moisture retention because rain is infrequent in their natural habitat. Uh, this means that humidity is not a major concern when you're keeping them in captivity. Uh, they're used to it being very dry. Now in the wild, Brettles python eat a wide variety of prey, including large mammals like rock wallabies and feral rabbits. Uh, they also eat skinks, lizards, uh, birds, including a certain kind of nesting parrot that is a large food source for them. Now interestingly, uh, wild Brettles pythons travel about twice the distance traveled by similar sized tropical carpet pythons. Um, one study found that Brettles pythons average about 1,500 feet between retreat sites, uh, which highlights you know, the harshness of their natural environment and the need to move around to survive. For this reason, I think it's important to give them a large enclosure with plenty of space to move around. Now this reddish color that they have, this brick red, terracotta red, is very useful for blending into their natural environment. Uh, the McDonald Ranges and the area around Alice Springs where they're from has a lot of red colors in the rocks and in the dirt, uh, so it's great for blending in. Now in captivity, clutches of up to 50 eggs have been reported with this species. Uh, large clutch size is an adaptation to deal with the high predation they face in the wild when they're young. And this is important because large monitors and birds of prey tend to pick these guys off when they're small uh, out there in the outback. It's more likely that you'll get clutches between eh, 20 and 45 eggs or so. Uh, those huge clutches are not typical, but they are possible. Now, as you can see here, once Brettles pythons get up to size, they are extremely fearless, placid, uh, laid-back snakes. Out there in their natural environment, once they get this big, they really have absolutely nothing to fear. Um, and for that reason, they make wonderful pets. They're very gentle. They are a fantastic handling snake. Uh, they move around at a pretty slow pace. Um, they grip onto you really well with that prehensile tail. And they're just very gentle. Uh, they're gentle giants. And I have yet to interact with a Brettles python that was nasty. Uh, of course it does happen. With As with any species of animal, there will always be the odd one out that just does not like people. It's been reported that even wild adults, once they get up to big size, are pretty tame and won't try to bite when handled. It's for this reason that Brettles pythons are often regarded as the most docile and uh, tame carpet python, even though they're not carpet pythons. Like I said, they often get lumped in. They can have a strong feeding response. Uh, for this reason, occasionally people will get bit uh, when they're mistaken for food. This can be avoided through a variety of techniques and strategies. For me, I hook train all my snakes. So before I pull a big snake like this out, I tap them on the head with the hook to let them know that it's not feeding time. Centralians are generally nocturnal. They're active at night during the warm summer months and they shelter during the day. Wild Brettles pythons have been found in the wild to have an average internal body temperature of about 91 degrees during the summer and about 66 degrees during the winter. Um, really again highlighting the fact that they are bulletproof when it comes to temperature. So unlike a lot of the carpet pythons, uh, Brettles pythons are actually spring breeders. They breed when their environment starts to warm up again during the spring. Um, they do initiate in male combat, so in the wild a lot of the times you can identify males uh, when snakes are found with lots of nasty scars and battle wounds as uh, the males will literally viciously fight each other for uh, rights to the female. One story that I find really interesting about wild Brettles pythons is that there was a nest discovered where there was more than 70 eggshells in one tree hollow with a big female uh, basking on a branch next to it. Um, these eggs came from different seasons, suggesting that Brettles pythons might uh, repeat nest sites uh, year after year and uh, use the same location multiple times. Uh, I think that's really interesting. 
Centralians are known in the hobby as being really good maternal incubators. Females can even increase the temperature inside their coils by about five and a half degrees uh, through continuous shivering, contrasting with other species that use a pulse shivering method to warm up their eggs. So there's some different lines of Brettles pythons that are often referred to in the uh, United States stock. So we have the Afores line, the Lazic line, and the Harris line Brettles pythons here. Um, so oftentimes Afores line Brettles are known for being a bit lighter color, a little bit redder, um, and Lazic line and Harris line just have some really nice, uh, crisp, well-defined uh, banding and beautiful coloration as well. Jeez. I'm gonna go get my Brettles python, she's running away. <laughs> Whew, okay, we're back. So there are a few morphs in Brettles pythons. We have the stonewashed morph, uh, the genetic striped morph, and the hypomelanistic morph. Both the stonewash and genetic stripe morphs came from Lazic line animals, while the hypomelanistic morph came from a Fors line, I believe. Uh, both stonewash and genetic stripe are simple recessive mutations. Uh, the mode of inheritance for the hypomelanism is still not 100% understood, uh, but signs are pointing towards it being a polygenic trait. So even in the same pairing, some of the offspring in a clutch of hypos will exhibit uh, varying degrees of hypomelanism, depending on how many of those hypo alleles they receive. Brettles pythons are very easy to keep, uh, as long as they're kept in an appropriately sized cage, uh, given a hot spot somewhere around 85 to 90 degrees, with a thermo gradient down to about 70, 75 degrees. Um, I use radiant heat panels with all of my Brettles pythons. Uh, they are semi-arboreal, so they will climb over uh, things like bulbs and, <laughs> and ceramic heat emitters, and you just don't want any accidental burns. Uh, heat pads can also be used, um, but when they get up to large size, I find it easiest just to use a radiant heat panel. Because they are semi-arboreal and spend quite a bit of time up in the trees in the wild, I do like to give them the opportunity to climb when possible. Um, you can do this with artificial perches, logs, or even shelves. Just something to get them off the ground, I think they uh, really appreciate. So you'll want to feed your Brettles python an appropriately sized rodent about every uh, once a week or two for hatchlings. Uh, with adults, I would feed much more sparingly to avoid obesity. Um, I feed my adults um, about once every month or two at the most. Um, they don't need that much food. Power feeding and overfeeding a snake will absolutely lead to health problems, uh, shortened lifespan, and even fertility problems. Because they do eat birds and other animals in the wild, you could also give your Brettles python quail or chickens if you desired. Uh, I do this occasionally to vary their diet, but it's not necessary. You could absolutely keep one of these very healthy on a diet of rodents if you do not overfeed. Now, as you can see, Brettles pythons are absolutely incredible animals. Uh, puppy dog tame, absolutely beautiful. They get up to a really big size, but not too much for one person to manage on their own. Uh, and for this reason, I think that they are a fantastic pet snake. I would even venture to say they're a good first snake because of how tolerant they are to temperature shifts. Uh, keeper error will not kill your snake uh, in most cases. They are extremely strong and resilient, and uh, they're just, they're my favorite. I think they're great. I'm actually trying to breed two of my Brettles pythons this season. This is my adult female. Uh, she is about five years old and she is heterozygous for both the stonewash gene and the genetic stripe gene. The male that I'm pairing her with is also het for both stonewash and stripe. So if everything goes well, I'll have a really cool clutch of Brettles python eggs to share with you guys. Uh, this is my first time attempting breeding uh, and I'll keep you updated on the channel. Hit that subscribe button to keep up to date. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that thumbs up button. And also check out my video that I did on black-headed pythons in a very similar format to this. You can link that video right here, hopefully, if I can make that happen. Computers are challenging, and I'm doing my best. Comment down below on what you would like to see next. Uh, I hope to have more videos rolled out very soon. Thanks, have a great day.